Welcome to Discover Events with the Event Recorder. Hey, I'm Eric, and sometimes locating that event you need to subscribe to in order to tap into a specific process can be, be a lot of work. And we have already explored different ways of, of approaching this on, here on the channel. Um, but there is another way and it's called the event recorder. And um, I thought I'll do a, uh, hopefully a quick video on uh, on the event recorder because it's actually pretty nice. Um, so let's get right into the, to it and uh, I'll show you how it works. So here is my business central. I'm running on a, the usual Docker uh, thing. And the first thing I do is simply search for the event recorder here in here. So I, I'll search for that. And yeah, I, you see, I actually pinned the, uh, the action bar here because that's, it's kind of weird that, you know, you get into something like this and then that's, it's, it's, that's not a lack of real estate, right? So why are these like, anyway, so not promoted, I think of, uh, is my rant. Uh, anyway, um, so what we can do here is that we can say start recording. Yes. And then when we're done, we can do stop recording. And nothing has been recorded in the brief period that I had it running. So I will say start again. Um, and now I'll just keep this on the screen. So I'll do Alt Q and then let's post a sales order. Uh, so I'll go to sales orders. And um, I'll post one here. So I'll post this guy, ship an invoice. That has been posted. So I escape back to the event recorder. I hit stop. And it tells me that I have recorded 2,856 events. Just because I posted a single sales order. Anyway. Uh, and I get a list of this and we can of course take that list in uh, copy it into something, but we can also actually filter the list. Um, and something is going wrong with my, uh, that's probably okay. Um, so let's first take a look at, you know, custom events. Uh, so we can say event type and what, so we have two types of events that are triggered here. We have custom events, meaning that that's events that are sitting in code. And then we have trigger events and you, we can see the trigger events are on tables on before delete on after delete, um, on the page on after get current on get current, uh, on new record. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of, of trigger events. Um, so, so let's start by looking at just custom events. So now we've got custom events. Uh, there's way less, but there's still a few here. Um, so maybe the next thing we need to do is that we need to figure out if we can, we can filter this even more and um, let's see if this will be wider or not come on there we go uh, we can see that there's a bunch of these in error message management uh, and we don't really care about that one so let's add another filter for the calling object name to be different from arrow message management. Okay. So now the list is getting shorter and hopefully we can, we can manage at this point. Um, we can see that perhaps if, if we look at this, we can also see the progress, right? Uh, sales post, yes, no then sales post, and then stuff happens on the sales header, calculate tax, 
change lock management, integration management, we don't care about that. A bunch of graph management, um, we don't really care about that either. Release stuff. Remember, if you saw the video on, on release management where we located on after sales, on after release sales doc in specifically in release sales document code unit. So the, the one that we used in the release management video, that's the one we have here. Um, and we can see the process is going on, on after sales ship header, on after sales shipment header insert and on before sales invoice header insert. So we can we can clearly see the process unfolding now here. So it's almost like a, a you know, an event lock uh, of what has happened. Um, and at some point, we might actually find the event that we're looking for. Uh, and maybe it's, um, maybe it's something with the, I'm, I'm just looking at the screen here. So maybe it's something with uh, reservations. So we can see, ah, but the one that we're actually looking for uh, working with reservations is in the reservation entry table. Uh, so, you know, copy tracking from ISM Ledger. Let's see what that. That's that's where we we want to transfer some values from from uh, uh, from ISM Ledger entries to tracking or the other way around. I'm not sure which one this is. So now we have found our event. What we can do, you see, the last thing over here is. And let me make sure that. So the last one over here is get a AL snippet. So I click on that, and we get a piece of AL saying, "Hey, event subscriber stuff like that." So let's copy that and head into Visual Studio Code, um, and I just created a new uh, project here, so we can do a new file, a code unit something subscribers and I'll paste what we got from the event recorder right in here and so we have a, a event subscriber for the uh, for the reservation entry database on after copy tracking from item ledger entry um, so the only thing we need to do now is okay let's insert those parameters we have the item ledger entry and we have the reservation entry and now we could do our field so reservation so entry dot our you know our our new field is equal item ledger entry perhaps we also inserted the field there so our new field here but you know locating this event can be rather difficult uh, but with the help of the event recorder it's it's not that difficult uh, so be aware you know we got we got a fair amount of, of events so it's it's important that that you let, let's actually just run through the process again so you know, i said start clears the stuff then i go straight to where i want to do something so as little detouring as possible. Um, and so if I go to, I go to sales order um, and I from this one, I don't, I don't go to the cart because this just creates more noise. And since I have the function here, I can go and say uh, post and maybe we only want to ship in this case. So we'll just ship from this one. We shipped, I escape back, I say stop. We get 1,027 events just by shipping and then we got a bug huh that's interesting I am pretty sure that what happened here was the fact that when I said start it just deleted everything within my filter see that ha huh. that's a bug Okay, let's do that again. So now I have no filters. I have no filters, so I'll do start. And I will go to sales orders. 
it's kind of a bonus content thing. So I'll go to this one and I'll ship here. So this one's shipped. I go back, I hit stop, 781. I want to display them this time, no no errors. So I can go through the same filtering operation again. Yeah, so if you have filters and you want to do this again, remember to uh, to clear the filters before you hit start, otherwise uh, it won't delete the stuff that's outside the current filters. Uh, that's a fun little bug. Um, so anyway, that's the event recorder, a nifty little tool that really helps you locate those events that are hard to find um, and in some cases I've also been using this if if working together with someone say I need to can you do something in this process and to be honest I might not even totally understand the process and and what what the customer is doing but I asked him to okay one open the event recorder start go to the process do the process go close back in and stop the event recorder, copy all the output from the event recorder in an Excel sheet, send it to me. Then I can see what's happening. I can see where I have a chance to interject code and, and, and do stuff in, in, the, in, in that process. So really, really helpful. Anyway, uh, since this was a short video, I think you have time to watch this one. That's a good one. See you next time.